Hey everyone, last week we got a new inflation reading that delivered a bit of a mixed message. If you look at the headline CPI number on a year-over-year -year basis, it went down 30 basis points to 3.1%, which is where it was last November. If you look at core CPI inflation on a year-over-year -year basis, it was flat at 3.9%. But the metric that's grabbing Wall Street's attention is the 40 basis point month over month increase in core CPI inflation, the largest month over month increase since April of 2023. And that reading caused Wall Street to reshuffle the bets on what the Federal Reserve will do with rates this year. But what's this really mean for commercial real estate investors? I mean, it's generating a lot of noise. But at the end of the day, how much does it really matter to commercial real estate? When you boil it down, that 40 basis point month over month movement of some archaic inflation metric just isn't that important. That measurement really only matters in respect to its effect on the Federal Reserve's rate decisions over the next 10 months. And that only matters if the Fed moves rates materially. What's the threshold of rate movement that would actually change the calculus on commercial real estate investing? Of course, I understand that an eighth of a point can materially affect whether a deal is net positive or net negative. But at the end of the day, investors need to focus on developing an effective investment strategy for 2024 and beyond. And in all honesty, a marginal change in interest rates shouldn't be the principal driver of that strategy. Since the beginning of the year, we've seen a lot of changes in the forecast of Fed rate movements. At the beginning of the year, the consensus was that the Fed would take rates down by 100 to 125 basis points over the course of the year, with the first cut being in March. At this point, Wall Street has pretty much taken a March rate cut off the table, and there's no clear cut consensus on whether we'll see a rate cut in May or June. But looking a bit further ahead, to the end of the year, FedWatch predicts a 10% likelihood rates will be down by 50 basis points or less. There's a 23% probability rates will go down by 75 basis points, a 34% likelihood rates will go down by 100 basis points, a 24% chance rates will be lowered by 125 basis points, and an 8% probability they'll go down by more than 125 basis points. So what can investors do with that info? Here's how I think about it. Assuming there aren't any giant curveballs, the Fed will probably start reducing rates in May or June, but they'll likely slow play the rate cuts. They'll be cautious. So after the first rate cut, the second will likely be a couple months after that. And a third cut would likely be a couple months after the second. The Fed might slip in one or two more rate reductions depending on what happens with the economy or if there's a major change in the outlook or there's some black swan event. But if investors pencil in a slow play rate reduction of 75 basis points or so over the course of the year, then that should provide a reasonably sound base model. Basically, that's a good trend a heck of a lot better than trying to make deals work in a rising interest rate climate. At least we don't have the wind in our face. So what do you do with this? First, I'd suggest every investor review their portfolio. See if there are any assets that won't deliver the targeted returns. Then get an opinion of value on those assets to determine whether it makes sense to sell them and redeploy the capital. As for acquisitions, I still look at 2024 as a roll up the sleeves kind of year. I wouldn't be betting on a rising tide to deliver my target yields. Yes, there could be some lift, especially when you look at the two to five year horizon. But as an investor, I'd be looking for assets where I can move the needle on that property, where I can create value. Whether that's through some sort of property upgrades, through repositioning, or through management or leasing, or through some other value add dimension. Value creation will be the name of the game. And I believe there will be a lot of value created in 2024. 
And yes, the inflation metrics and the Federal Reserve rate outlook are important, but they likely won't be the most important factor for investors this year. 2024 will be a very good year to clear the dogs out of the portfolio and to get capital focused on creating value over the course of the next three to five years. That's the target, creating value over the next three to five years. As always, keep your eyes on the horizon.